everybody, Meredith here, and I am with John Christie. John, tell me what your official title at Lennar is these days. Uh, official title. I think it's uh, Life Improvement Specialist. No, <laughs> right? No, sorry. sorry, I guess they don't let me use that one on my business card. Area Sales Area Sales Manager. And for everybody listening, John is located right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and that's how we know each other from this market. Um, we we don't work together at Lennar, but we've worked together on a couple of other builders where you've been a sales manager, right? And we did some marketing for you and that was really fun. And that's kind of how we got to know each other. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy it every time I get to have a conversation with you. <laughs> so right now you are also serving in a volunteer, some might say voluntold capacity yeah. <laughs> as the Triangle Sales and Marketing Council, the SMC of Raleigh. You're a programs chair this year? A programs chair, yeah. I, I didn't get a medal or anything, but uh, that's <laughs> cool. I, I did get another official title, but I'll still stick with Life Improvement Specialist. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I asked you to do one of our Power 15 interviews, because when I'm thinking about people in the industry who really value education and hope to positively improve and influence others for good, I mean, you're one of the top people that come to my mind. I mean, that has always been your focus. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I appreciate those kind comments. I, I just... <laughs> What I, uh, what I would call a hunger for learning and realizing yeah. I, don't, I don't really know what's going on. I better figure it out. Yeah, but that, yeah, that is you. I mean, you've done everything from, weren't you in Jeff Shore's leadership group for a while? Yeah. His yeah. round table? The, the, the round table and, and the mastermind group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mastermind groups have been part of my career from, from the time I got out of college. So uh, it's too. always good around great people like just like yourself, to have conversations with, to bounce ideas with, uh, so you can say something out loud and find out if it really has merit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so we're recording this. Uh, those of you that are listening, you know, you'll be listening mid-November. We're recording this late September to have everything in ready in time for the summit. And at the time we're recording it, John and I were just talking before um, I hit the record button of just how strong the sales pace is and how unexpected that is. Uh, all of us, I think, coming out of COVID were shocked at what happened, this surge in housing demand. How are you guys handling that? And what's your main focus right now sitting several months later into it? Yeah, kind of our, our main focus is to try to make sure our customer experience stays strong, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I think in, in, the, in today's hot sizzling market, everybody could sell homes, right? But our focus really is on how to keep the customer, customer experience strong from the beginning to the end. And that, that's, not, that's way easier said than done, uh, but that is our focus, trying to control how far out we'll actually sell a home to keep the window short. And, you know, we don't have much inventory, but we're trying to supply a great experience for our customers and stay focused from our construction team to our, our consultants all the way through and make sure they're cared for after the sale. And that's really our focus. Do you find that that customer experience is mostly impacted by the internal processes that you guys have set up? You know, that I, I say here for us at Mirrors Communications, the minute we get off process of however it is we normally do something, if it's how we normally build a site for a home builder or how we normally do their SEO, we have a step, a, li a list of steps. And when somebody asks us to deviate or we get off process, it goes downhill really fast. That, Do you that find that true. to be true? Abs absolutely. Like we have a very process, like once we, build a home. We don't want to allow any change. Once we build it on paper, we don't really want to allow any changers, changes because this is what we know. We are great home builders. Yes. We're not great remodelers. <laughs> Good one. <And> any <laughs> change that we do at whatever stage ends up creating remodeling uh, process for us. And we're not good at that. And then we try to help the customer or, uh, you know, give into something that they want because they really want it. We try to 
think we're doing a favor for them and we're actually doing them a disservice. Yeah. I absolutely uh, agree, right? You find a process that works and stick to it because it's in the best interest of your customer. Yeah, that's right. And when we recently bought uh, and built a home last year in 2019, that production builder, same thing. Once it was signed off on in the design center and all the paperwork was done, yeah. zero changes. And honestly, the minute I signed that piece of paper, I yeah. felt this flood of relief over me. I really did as a buyer. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was being limited or cut off. What I felt like was it's done. It's <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah. There's no more agonizing. Is that floor too dark? Is that cabinet going to match that tile? It's done. It is what it is. And I now have to live with it and like it. And it kind of felt like a huge relief to me because I had stressed out so much going into those appointments. Like, am I going to like what I pick? Yeah. And once I was told that that's it, I, I don't know, for me, it was a big relief. So if you're a salesperson listening, sometimes what you might be perceived, you might perceive as limiting or difficult or something that a customer is going to blanch at or not like, don't necessarily assume that that's going to be everybody's point of view on it. That's right. I'm, not, I'm just going your story and put it in our back and share it with our team so they can yeah. tell the story of because I think a lot of customers feel that way. We just really? don't take time to flush that conversation out. Yeah. It's like stick a fork in it. It's done. I'm yeah. good. You know, and now I get to wait and like wait for my present of my home to be built like a Christmas morning and unwrap my present. And by then months later, I didn't half remember what was or what wasn't. And I was so excited to be in it and I loved all of it. And it was amazing. Nice. And, and, it was all mine and I had picked it. So there's a default in a lot of times what you select, you're going to be inclined to like because you picked it and you want to validate yourself and your own choices. There's a bias in that. That's right. Yeah, it's hard, hard so, to argue with your own choice. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So one of the uh, questions that you were going to be gracious enough to answer, I, I, everybody that does these interviews, I'm giving them kind of some questions to ponder and to pick yeah. from. So I they hope, don't hopefully I remember which ones I picked. I know, right? Well, if you didn't, we'll talk about something <laughs> else. It's no problem. <laughs> but one of them you were telling, you were saying was something you do that's a time saver. Uh, when that one of them, one of the questions, yeah, uh, what's your so right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah. led me to the thought process of like just being more effective at work. So I know, yeah. I don't know if you experienced this, Meredith, but I know when we went like into the Zoom world, right? I, I found I could pa pack so much more into my day because <laughs> I, I didn't have to travel from place, right? Or, you know, I could get so much in on a day I was just going to be in front of the Zoom, Zoom world. So, I found myself kind of over, over scheduling myself. Yes. Uh, so I normally do a Friday planning session uh, where Friday afternoon, I lock it down and I plan out my next week, get all my strategies, top priorities. There's nothing special in that. But I, I'll tell you one of the hacks that I found for myself to be more effective is like after a webinar or after uh, a, a meeting that was a really important meeting for the, for the week, I would schedule an extra 20 minutes, right? where I could kind of download that meeting, write some notes, some thoughts, self-evaluation of what could be better, and maybe the action steps after that, that I was kind of totally missing because I'd buzz through a day, Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call, and then be kind of at the end, be like, oh, now I got tomorrow, I got a Zoom call, Zoom call. Zoom and call, Zoom call. <laughs> so I found just, just trying to, to create and schedule that time, 15 or 20 minutes where I could kind of reflect and kind of make sure I got out of and addressed the things that were important in that meeting. Because uh, especially if I was gathering the meeting and having other people spend their time, I wanted to make sure I was, I was addressing things appropriately and not just going from one meeting to the next. So. I found, it, it's funny that you say that because I found exactly the same thing. So I bet you a lot of our listeners are going to as well. I could do five, seven Zoom meetings a day yeah. Yep. Uh, 
45 minutes to an hour a piece yep. stacked on top of each other. And I was handwriting all my notes yep. on the all like client builder meetings where we were going over their numbers. You've done those with me, yeah. in the past, right? Yeah. And I love to handwrite notes. Uh, I love, I'm, I love paper and pen and um, I remember things better when I handwrite, but if you handwrite notes for five to seven meetings a day that are all back to back, and then yeah. you do the next seven the next day and the next seven the next day, you have a bunch of notes that live in your notebook that none of my other rest of my team has access to. And okay. it's two days later, and they're supposed to have already taken action on some <laughs> item that I was supposed to delegate. So Alan, um, those of you that are listening, my business partner in life and in work is Alan, my husband. And he said to me, why aren't you typing those directly into the client Slack channel as you have the meeting and tagging each person on their action item? And I was like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like what you're saying. You're taking time right afterwards to process your notes and do what you need to do with them. Right. I'm trying to do it as I'm going or take a few minutes. But you're right. When you're this moving at this kind of collapsed pace, you have to, I call it plug the holes in the dam of what's like eating up time. Uh, to keep everything moving. Absolutely. And sometimes it's just good to evaluate what just ha happened right after yes. it happened. Uh, yes. And there's no better evaluation, in my opinion, than self-evaluation. I know. Right? Everybody ever has a perspective of what we do and how we do it. But in, in the reality, right, we, we usually judge ourselves harder, especially the type of persons that are going to be viewing this, right? Hard driving, high achievement people, we judge ourselves harder than other people. So just to take a little time to self-evaluate right there has just, yeah. just kind of been a game changer for me. Yeah, because it can be not only the action item that you need to either delegate or yourself accomplish, but it also could be just, how did that go? Like, did I have the tone that I'd hoped for? Was I a good listener? Did right. I express my feelings calmly but directly, or did I get a little hot under the collar, <laughs> which yeah. is definitely I can ha I can happen. So, yeah, just taking that second to process it, it's really important. Absolutely, and I know one of the things I found, Meredith, is we I, I wanted to make sure I was fully present, right? Yeah, because I know I I, yeah. I was really good at training myself for the years in an in person meeting. Yeah. To turn off my phone, to, to not bring anything but a blank notebook in, to not be distracted, to be committed. If I was going to commit to a meeting, I was committed. Uh, yeah. When I got into Zoom world, I felt like the distractions came from other angles, right? It could be yes. other things going on in my house, maybe my yard work going on, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And all the things popping on your screen. Or, or just, right, making sure I shut down my email before I'm going into a Zoom call. So I'm not getting, you know, blitzed by uh, tempting headlines. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No, I, d I have to do the same thing. Uh, and it's funny, now that I'm typing the notes uh, while I'm doing them, I make sure I tell each person, I swear to you, I am not multitasking. I am yeah. not doing my email. I know you can hear me typing huh? and I'm typing your notes <laughs> because it's important, even if we're virtual, that, that we give people our best full attention yeah. and that we're as present as we can be. And, um, Certainly turning the camera on helps, I think, because they can see you and they can yeah. see if you're not paying attention. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I was like, um, I was helping out with my son back in the spring when he was virtual and I was helping the class. And I finally just said to the kids, I can see you on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Stop it. Look at me. Look at the camera. <laughs> I think they were like, oh my God, scary mommy has shown up. <laughs> Who is this? Brady's mommy is scary mommy. <laughs> All right. So um, we might have already kind of covered this one, but you, 
you know, your biggest challenge with your role right now? Is that the customer expectations? Uh, well, customer expectations or... is big, but I, I'd say there's probably one bigger, Meredith. Oh, good. We, okay, tell we can, me. We can dive into it really quick. So, I, yeah. I remember, like when we first hit COVID, we weren't sure what's going to happen. We kind of had no. this kind of two week real slowdown. Everybody's worried. Are we going to ever sell a home again? Right? Yes. Is it 2009 again? Right. I, and, and I so was ready was, to sell my second car and cancel my yeah. cable again. <laughs> so how can I cut expenses? So, yeah. but, but if you look back, remember in 2009, when somebody came in with a contract, like I, and we had a skeleton office at the time, but people would stand up and cheer. Right. So, so you remember you learned back then and through the other downturns we've been through, you never take the market for granted. Mm -hmm. So I think one of, one of the challenges we have here is, is to make sure we stay, we stay hungry for change. What I loved about what happened in the midst of the COVID environment is, remember you did a webinar or somebody came out with some information and like all of a sudden, instead of 60, 70, 100 people were on it, it was oh. Jan 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people yes. trying to get information. You saw this rise of hunger, right? Yes. And sometimes yes. I think the biggest challenge we're up against is, we think we already got this. We know what we're doing and we know what's going to happen. We know what to do. So I think the challenge we have is to remember we have to keep changing, right? That's probably the biggest thing I learned from the environment we went through this year. In fact, I don't, you probably can't hear it, but maybe you can. I keep, I keep a bunch of change, right? A little change I put in my pocket every day. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I keep it on my desk. It's just my reminder to myself, like, keep changing, keep getting better at what we're doing. Don't, don't settle for, hey, I think I know what's going to go on because I can predict the future. Because obviously the one thing we learned this year is none of us are very good at predicting the future. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. no, and you're right. Like as somebody that's done this a long time, uh, while I was fearful and, you know, just like a lot of people didn't know what was happening next, I also kind of found myself thriving on the challenge. It was a new challenge. It was something different. And it was like, okay, this is a new puzzle. Let's try to figure it out. That's right. And so to me, it's, it's really it's the blend true. now of taking everything that was really good about what we, how we used to do it. Yeah. And blend it with the new, right. And make yeah. sure we're blending the best parts together and letting the old parts that weren't as good just kind of fall off. Right. And I yeah. think that if we can do that, then we do create a great customer experience because we're changing ourselves and evolving and we're not, we're not getting stuck somewhere. Yeah. All right. So my last question for you is something funny that has happened to you either on site or in your office. Like what is something funny that you're like, I cannot even believe that that went down. So this will take me back to my on-site days. So I'm on-site, I'm in a, in a community in an apex here in North Carolina, and I have somebody walk through the door and I used a greeting I had never used before and will probably never use again. So <laughs> somebody walked through the door and I said, I know you, I see you every day, and I don't know your name. And they look at me and they're like, I said, yeah, I have never started a conversation this way. <laughs> day, I go upstairs into the owner's suite. And when I flip on the light, I look at your picture. And uh, they're like, my picture, I, I, I don't even live here. And they were coming in and moving into the town. And I said, well, you just got to see this. Let's walk upstairs. And I'm going to show you. And then you can tell me. But I... If it's not you, I'd be shocked. <laughs> so we walk upstairs. I, you know, the light's already on. I point to the picture and she says, oh my goodness, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I told you, I, I see you every day. And uh, I said, I, I've known you now for like two years. I've been coming in and seeing your picture every day. And, and uh, I said, but now you have to tell me like, how did you get here? Okay. And so... We're, we go through a little bit of conversation and finally she, she unpeels the onion a little bit and feel like it's like, I remember I did this modeling shoot when I went to college and I signed <laughs> off on this waiver and 
they did say something about maybe using it in model homes or offices or, or things like that. And I said, there you go. And <laughs> I said, I know we're jumping to the finish here, but you do know what this means. And she says, what? I said, well, obviously, if your pictures are here, you yeah. should live here. Yeah, this is your home. <laughs> And while a lot of stories aren't like Disney World, this one actually was. She bought a house that day. She was enamored that her picture was already in the community. And uh, I wish I could co make that a, like, sales process like we talked about earlier. So we yes. could just sales that happen like that, put somebody's picture in a home, and they find it, and they buy it. I Unfortunately, I don't think that process will duplicate. Uh, oh. but, but it was a lot of fun. That's hysterical. Well, at least you were right. Because it would have been worse if she'd gotten up there and been like, that is not me. That looks nothing like me. I am mortified that you think that's what I look like. I mean, <laughs> this is like asking somebody, how far along are you? Like, this could have gone really wrong. <laughs> it, it really could. And I guess that that's a good point too, Meredith, that I hadn't really thought of. Uh, <laughs> it, as a salesperson... I think one of my biggest strengths was to trust, I think what you, you mentioned, your instincts earlier, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. So oh, if yeah. a thought popped in my head when I was in my selling mode, I always said it, a name or a you. comment or whatever, because Good I learned you. to trust that because I practiced it over time. Uh, nice. So that, that's, an, that's an interesting take on that. But not incredible, <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of fun because uh, the truth yeah. is really stranger than fiction in our world. Oh. 100 million percent. That's fantastic. Well, John Christie, you are a treasure and a delight. And I have enjoyed working with you over the years and getting to know you and being inspired by you. I know that you've had an impact on the salespeople that you manage, but also on me for sure. You know, I've shared those stories with you in the past and you just, you do make people better around you. And that is quite a cool legacy to leave. So that is why you're part of our 15. So thank you for taking the time today. I appreciate it. Always appreciate yeah. the time. And you're one of my favorites. That's not because <laughs> we're doing this interview. Uh, <laughs> you can delete this if you want. But I think people yep. pick up something of value. It's fun to be able to talk with people who are just trying to make the world place. And you always do that. Thank you. Yeah. Mary. Right back at you. Thanks, John.